welcome to Power Planet's Mind Body Week, but in the internet. Um, we've, I just want to say massive respect to everyone for being here because it's a really hot day and we're predominantly mamas, so it's just, I mean, they're amazing, basically. This event was going to take place in March um, for International Women's Day, but we all know what happened in March. <laughs> so it's evolved into something, I think, a bit more wonderful online. So I'm really excited for the week ahead. We've got daily meditations that are going on up on social media with Jo Miller. And then on Sunday, she's doing this big fierce female embodiment workshop about harnessing rage. And I think to be allowed to feel rage right now is pretty indulgent in itself. So I can't wait for that one. And then every night at seven this week, we've got some really amazing speakers. So Tuesday is social media wokeness. And I've called it, does my bum look woke in this? And that's with Gemma Kearney talking to Pandora Paloma, Rima Thiessen and Jasbir Dillon and a little performance from Brigitte Aphrodite. And then Wednesday is Femme Sex Power with Ruby Rare talking to uh, Dr. Nisha Mohan and Jennifer Adele, who's in the room here, and Angela Wui about all things sex with a reading from Michelle Creedman. And then Thursday, we're reimagining the future with Danny St. James and we're talking uh, diverse futures and breaking down steps to achieving it with Suzanne and Nikki from One and Three Quarters and Cassie Leon from Cocoa Butter Club, who are amazing. And then Friday night, we're doing a craft along with Zoe Murphy making empowerment banners. And then tonight, it's birth then, what the fuck? Um, with Clarissa Rene, hi Clarissa. Speaking to Jenny Scott, Laura Dockerell, Kira Campbell, and then a pelvic floor workshop at the end. So we'll be here for an hour in total. You can use the chat box and we're going to put the, um, we need to do an evaluation form at the end. So we're going to put the link in there now. And if you can remember to do that at the end, we love you, but we'll also email it to you. Um, if you want to say hi and get involved, just say hi to us in there. Um, I'm going to turn my mute off in a minute because these guys are going to take over. This is very poignant subject matter to me because I've got a toddler who could run the room at any point. Um, it's a wonder that we're all here right now. So everyone, well done for being here. Um, women are amazing. Still we rise, you know what I mean? So we know that women are wicked and I'm going to hand over to Clarissa, who is the one. The floor is yours, girlfriend. I'm pressing mute. Hey everyone, I'm Clarissa. Welcome to Birth and What the fuck? This is great. I mean, li literally, I could talk for days on this one. I may talk for days, but you will cut me off after a while. But yeah, I'm so happy to be here to um, host this wicked event. Thank you, Amy, for inviting me. Um, and I would just like to welcome my co-hosts. We have Laura, we have Kira, and we have Jenny. Hi, girls. Hey, hey, hey. Um, so I just wanted to um, introduce myself and then hand the floor over to the ladies to introduce themselves a little bit too, okay? Um, as I said, I'm Clarissa Rene, life coach and now newly trained hypnotherapist. Woo -hoo -hoo. Um, and I just love this subject of women. Obviously, I'm a single mom of a beautiful, beautiful six-year-old boy. Um, it's, it's been the most shaping time of my life for good for bad I learned so much about myself transformation as I always tell my coaching clients is never comfortable it's not all glitters and incense in fact it's never that and um and so I'm just really happy to be here and chatting to you all um also I think there might be a chance for um questions at the end maybe five minutes at the end if anyone's got any questions so pop it into the chat box and if we have time at the end we'll be more than happy to answer your questions. If we don't have time I will definitely be more than happy to answer any questions through Pal, hit me up and I will answer any questions that you have. Um, so now I'm going to hand over to, to start with Laura, Laura Dockrell. Welcome! Hi everybody, it's so amazing to see you all. Um, Gosh, um, it's lovely. I felt a bit emotional actually just hearing you talk then, Clarissa, when I thought my tear ducts were dead. Um, they're not. Uh, so I'm Laura and I'm an um, author, writer. That's what I do for my everyday job, mostly for children's books. And then two and a half years ago, I had my um, first and definitely only child, a uh, little boy called Jet. And I was hit with a really uh, rare um, form of 
mental illness called postpartum psychosis, which um, about one in every thousand women suffer from it. And then my whole life turned upside down in every way. I never experienced mental uh, illness um, of any kind before this. So it was a complete trauma and shock for everybody, me and my family. And um, I wrote about it, which saved my life writing about it. And my book, What Have I Done, um, has just been released. Yeah, which Amy's really kind of holding up, has just come out. Um, mm. And I was meant to do a big launch. We were meant to launch at London Palladium. Um, and instead, I'm at home in my living room. But I actually think this is the safest place for me not to be on book tour in Reading somewhere eating cream cheese out of a travel lodge. Um, so thank you so much for having me. I'm really grateful to be here. Yay, welcome, welcome, Laura. And we have Kira Campbell, the wonderful Kira Campbell from Poodle and Blonde. Hi, Kira. Hi, Hi um, Hi, yeah, girl. I'm Kira. I run Poodle and Blonde with uh, my business partner, Winnie, and I've got a daughter who's 21 months old. She's my first daughter. I've been pregnant before that, but I had a miscarriage. So, um, yeah, I guess pregnancy birth everything the whole experience has always been terrifying and I'm trying my hardest to like just enjoy it and not overthink it and be scared of all the things that could potentially happen um and yeah my intro is nowhere near as good as yours Laura <laughs> oh dude like I felt that I totally totally felt that I totally felt that especially about the miscarriage bit but um yeah, yeah. thank you thanks Kira and Jenny Hey girl, hey. Jenny Scott from Mother's Meeting. Welcome. Um, right, I'm Jenny. I run a thing called Mother's Meeting. I've never known what it is. I still don't know what it is. Basically, <laughs> um, I've got three children, one that's nine, one that's five, and one that's two. My two older children has, have got a different dad. He lives in Peckham, and then we just moved down to Broadstairs near Margate um, two years ago. Um, basically I, before being a mum I was I'm a graphic designer art director and when I had Sunny I was 28 I, I'm going on now but anyway I was 28 oh, and no, I was like, no, you talk you talk it which now I'm 30 which was nearly 10 years ago and when I had him I was like you know going to an opening of an envelope you know you know ran Soho go to anything with a free beer and I was like, you know, having a baby's not going to change my life. You know, everyone's done it forever. It's not going to be that hard. And then after having him for two years, I was just like, oh my God. Like, I didn't even know babies didn't sleep in the night. You know what I mean? I was just like, I was so naive to everything. And nobody was on Instagram. Instagram wasn't a thing then. And it was just all just bunting and nursery rhyme at, at the library. And I was just like, there's got to be more, more to it than this. There's got to be other women out there like me. Um, so being a graphic designer, I just designed a poster to go to an exhibition at Somerset House because I was like, you know, if I make a poster and I put it on a website, I've got to go. Like, I didn't have any contact details on it, nothing. It was just a time and a place. And I was like, right, I've got to turn up. Um, so I went to Somerset House, I'd clean my trainers, wash my hair, walked up to Somerset House and there was a lady walking around with a buggy and she's like, are you here for the mother's meeting? And I was like, yeah, she's like, do you know where it is? And I was like, this is it. Tricked her into being my friend. And then um, I used to, I'd like, being a member at like Shoreditch House or so, I book at the biggest table available, like for 15 people. Didn't have anyone to invite, but I'd just design a poster and be like, you know, exclusive lunch. But literally I was just tricking people to like be my friend. Um, and then I've continued to do it basically. Every time I've had a baby, I've been like, oh, this is so hard because it doesn't get easier. Like if you see people that have got three kids, you're like, oh, they're professional. You know, they know what they do. You don't like every is all all of it is hard. Like whether you've got twenty kids or one, it's all got its own. But anyway, mothers' meetings, me getting people together that are sort of like-minded mums and doing interesting things. But when I started, the mum world was a very different place. So that's, that's actually what I was going to ask you, Jenny. First question I was going to ask you that the fact I saw obviously on your um, social that you've you know you've been going for like ten years now, yeah. and I just wanted to know how, how, in your view, how has social changed in terms of like how it reflects mothers, 
and motherhood. In a way, I think it's like an amazing opportunity. Like I wrote a book um, about motherhood called um, How to Be a Hip Mama Without Losing Your Cool, which was like, oh, bloody hell, maybe six years ago. Um, wow, yeah. All the mums that were in that, I was like, used to search for all these mums online. And it wasn't anything about like bloody Instagram numbers. It was just like cool, yeah. cool chicks that had interesting jobs, you know, that worked in art, fashion, music, all that kind of thing, that had yeah. kids and were like looking for like, like mums that were in the same sort of situation. Yeah. And, like, the world's a different place now. And like as much as Instagram and social media is amazing, it's also a bit of a sad place for mums because I think the anxiety, like not just mums, just everybody, but I think for mums especially, it's bloody tough. And it's just, I don't know, I just think we're all like bursting with anxiety in one way or another. And, totally. and where I think I started it from a really innocent place, like where brands and money and followers and the hunger for Insta fame, it's just changed everything and so you know i don't know i don't know where what the future is but it's not where what i started it as i just need to sort of rethink everything it's yeah it's totally that and like don't you think that now it's kind of like you said it's created we've kind of it's created a monster in terms of you know the anxiety levels like you were saying like way way up you know and you're kind of looking at all these like picture perfect mama bloggers that look like they have it together and their kids are all wearing like matching clothes and their lighting's right and shit like that. And you think, fuck man, I've got one kid and I can't work that. No, I, know, I think like the whole, I'm called, I'm going to write a book called birth in the beast because <laughs> it's literally like these women that I see them, they come to a mother's meeting, new little baby and then they get a little taster of like getting something free from a brand and then it's like it just ignites this weird thing inside people Beast. Yeah. yeah and it's just i've never been about that much like i've never you know my, my personal instagram i'm not about that and it's kind of like it's a bit you know it's amazing that these women have got these opportunities but at the same time the mental issues that is caused so many mums that i know and it's just a bit of a recipe for disaster. I think where I wanted to bring women together and like, go, in one way, I'm like, you can do anything, you know, the world's your oyster, you've got a kid, but this is just the beginning of a new life. In a way now, I want to take it back to the church halls and the libraries and like, let's just focus on the kids now. Forget about everything else. It's like, right. I think we need to go a bit full circle. Right, but you've got the, the, the most amazing platform for that as well, Jenny, and I really, I just, I love it. I love the, some of the stuff I read on there. Like you were saying, you were saying, um, trust your instincts. I read one thing that said, trust your instincts, feel the connection and mother your own way. And I think that if people actually, I mean, people need actually the guts to do that, but when you do, it's so freeing when you just don't give that fuck because, you know, you're already dealing with so much when you have the guts to actually say you know what i'm just i'm gonna just do this my way yeah it's so freeing i think, I, I, know, I, think yeah. I built it on this this platform and it's grown and it's like all these people have come from mothers meeting and yeah. met through it i think now to go full circle for me i'm a bit scared to be a bit like right <laughs> it's not about that anymore let's take it yeah. back to the church halls and the libraries and let's just be mums for a bit yeah totally totally i totally get that i totally get that um thank you thank you jenny and laura i was going to come to you as as i was saying to you um i've been reading your book and girl you've got cojones i can't even say balls because you had cojones to write that book so raw so honest and there were some bits in it literally i'm getting emotional even talking about it it, the first thing was when you said you came home and you're, you kind of like lurched. It was like a lurching of fear. And I thought, lurching of fear is the exact thing that I felt. And no one had put it like that before. And I was straight, and I, literally I was back seven years ago with my little bundle of joy coming back to my flat thinking, what the fuck? I was so terrified that my anxiety was going to like flare up, which because I suffered from badly from anxiety because of lack of sleep, which I knew was one of my triggers. 
that literally I was looking for it everywhere. Like you say in your book, I was looking for the, you know, is it happening? Am I, you know, I was high as a kite. I was literally high as a kite on no sleep. And I wanted to ask you, like, you know, like writing the book, how did it feel? Was it cathartic? Was it like shit? Actually, you know, like this, I'm not, I'm not actually doing this anymore. I know you say you very nearly didn't write it right at the beginning, but how did it feel? Um, <clears throat> oh, thank you for, thank you so much for reading it. Um, and for being oh, honest vivid. about that feeling, because it definitely was that like you, you, your home becomes like your kind of Walt Disney castle that you can't wait to get. You think, <laughs> oh, once I get out of the hospital, right. I'll be okay. Yeah. And then it was the only way to describe it is that kind of horrible Sunday night dread or doom before school when you're little and you're like something really horrible is going to happen and I just couldn't get rid of it and I, I recognized yeah. it from being young um I totally even you just describing it then that you're searching for it on the hunt for it I know exactly what you mean um yeah uh, <clears throat> I didn't it got to the point with writing it where I didn't really have a choice um I'd put a blog out on Clemmy Telford's mother of all lists because uh, her yeah. sister is one of my friends but we still have only met a couple of times and I think it was actually I didn't really have a choice like going back to what we were just discussing then it's like yeah. uh, I think there's a really insidious kind of tabloid sensationalized media version of what a postnatally depressed person looks like what a mm -hmm. depressed person looks like that were kind of washed out and faded mm -hmm. and like or we're we're a mother that's like a baby killer kind of running around in a blood-stained nighty or all this stuff and I was like right. well, well it isn't like that actually um at times you feel like a child at times you feel hysterical strength like you could lift a car up or scale a wall or fucking stab someone in the back of the neck like you feel strong yeah. and mm. but mostly you feel really scared and you know it's not your fault um so I kind of just wanted to recorrect that and um I didn't do anything wrong you know it isn't my fault and yet the illness and the whole nature of having a baby it's like the kind of ultimate athletes of being a person and you come last like if you feel that you haven't done it right you know naturally yeah. or intervention or you can't breastfeed or mm. even not being able to sleep I felt like a failure like I was already doing something wrong um and that just fed into the whole cycle of shame um yeah. and then uh because I write for children I, I was approached to write it into a book and I was just meeting people but I was like I just can't I had that I wasn't at peace with that like a inner critic kind of anxious voice yet that was going so it's basically going to me oh what are you going to do now like try and make a career out of this what are you going to do try and do now as you say like go on right. Strictly Come Dancing for postpartum psychosis that sort of thing <laughs> and um yeah. then I started writing it on my phone I just didn't it just came out of me and um I wrote 250,000 words on my phone so that book that is now is 80,000 words so it was like double and a bit and I finally got to meet it um and the, the editor just went are you ready to see it and throw it on the table is this peak like this big just all came like whilst I was looking after Jet um mm. and it completely saved my life there's like a form of therapy where if you I don't know what it's called but um the one where you talk about your trauma over and over again to the point that it becomes boring almost it's like fictionalized that you can separate yeah, you yourself. remove yourself from it exactly You're and this is not what happened yeah so this is what happened with this I feel like I wrote it and looked over it and edited it and it just feels like magically this one thing that even talking about it would have made me shrink into the corner and want to hide mm. now I'm like instead of mother goose I'm like mother noose mm. I'm like going around being like this shit's real I'm the town crier <laughs> <laughs> mum real talk I love it. I love that. And do you still do that thing where you basically like kind of like looking around to see that that look because you know that look now, right? And you say in your book that you're kind of like the the psychosis police, you know? Oh, totally. But, but I, do like, you still do it? Is it like just sort of like um, automatic? yeah mums don't worry here I'm not doing this on zoom but um <laughs> like just what we were saying with the mother's meeting then that's what's just so you know you do see it I I so many you know someone just gives you the edge sometimes we're looking at their Instagram and you can just it's just a look and we're human aren't we and we can just see you see mums in the, in the park I see them especially in this climate I can't imagine going through what I went through or even having a baby full stop in this climate must be absolutely terrifying I mean, in some ways, you don't have to let your mother-in-law in the house, which is a really great thing. But um, other than that, you just kind of, it's just a kind of glazed over, 
well that's why I called the book what have I done because you could just you just sit there thinking what have I done I had a life I had an identity and now I'm grieving my personal and I feel like I can't tell anybody because I'm so scared that people are going to judge me and tell me I'm not maternal enough or doing the right job or the health visitor is going to come and snatch my baby away all this stuff basically and it's nonsense but it just feeds the fear and the shame and I love what you said about as soon as you go I'm going to be exactly how I need to be instinctively as a mother but also as a person isn't that just the most freeing thing and that it's like trouble yeah, only comes when you try and mm. trouble only comes when you like try and cling on to a shred of dignity <laughs> but it's like if you just let yourself blow out with the wind and go fine yeah. take me this is how yeah. I'm doing this thing yeah you're probably gonna be all right <laughs> Exactly, exactly. But you know what surprises me is that in 2018, obviously, when you had Jet, is that that stigma is still present. And we've, you know, mental health in general, we've worked, you know, there's been so much said about it. But when it comes to mums, it's like that stigma is still there. And you kind of like you're saying about like the psychosis is just a look. You know, when you're in the park or you're at the beach and, you know, this mum's got like maybe like it might be one, it might be three kids around her. And she's kind of like got that step for the wives, like glaze, like. I know it. Yeah. Uh, And also, um, and it's just why not talking about it? Because then it's just the shame is what is actually feeding it. And that's what amplifies it. Once you remove the fear from it, because it's fear, fear just drives everything, right? Once you take away the fear uh what it's just actually this is just hu- we're just humans just talking and how it, how on earth childbirth is like the most universal thing that's been happening since the beginning of time we know yeah you might poo your fanny will tear we don't know that you might lose your head and never come back again it's like how is this not pa- why also are you passing me a protractor in school and not telling me that one day i could lose the plot and need to yeah. ask for help yeah. it's just beyond me basically yeah that was so strong of you, though. I mean, it take, like I say, it takes guts to write the book, but it takes guts to go through what you went through mm-hmm. and come out the other side of it. And do you feel like you're out the other side of it? Or are there days where you feel like, you know, you um, sense? So at the moment, I'm, I'm off. I'm not on any medication, for example, at the moment. I haven't no been way. for wow. a long time. But um, I, that's just where I'm at today. And actually, uh, the amount of pros that have come out of this illness way outweigh the cons, you know, and I love to know, it's so amazing to know as a person medication exists for me. If you kind of fall down the top of a tree that like Spider-Man, there are branches that can catch you so you don't have to hurt, hurt yourself. And yeah. you know, you're not a hero if you go into the dentist to have four teeth taken out and you go, I won't have actually any pain removal for any pain relief for that. Go on, yank them out, I'll be a hero. No one gives you a reward. and. I was so fussy, funny about taking meds in the first place. And when I came off them, no one met me at the end with a bouquet and a medal and went, you've done it. Like, it's yeah. completely normal. It's, nope. And I'm mm-hmm. so grateful to the medication. Um, mm-hmm. So around Jet's second birthday, we got married. So there was a lot going on at once. And my sleep, exactly wow. the same as you, Clarissa, my sleep started playing up a bit. Triggering, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's when I get very, that can still be quite a trigger point for me. Um, yeah. So when I have that, yeah, and I just reach out if I need to, I can just take, I take a bit of sleeping tablets here and there, or I cut back on things that I, I, I I need to spend more time with Jet, I need to cut back on work, I take sacrifices and I just keep my world as small, you know, doing this is massive cherry on the cake, I was going to be happy if I could just function each day, that would be enough for me, having this Mm. conversation with all these intelligent women and these beautiful bright boxes never did I think I'll be back to normal again doing this and then some so Mm -hmm. and you know what I'm healthy today but there's a lot I could get ill again and I know I'll get through that just like how I did the last time totally that's amazing a really amazing talking to you Laura um yeah I can't wait to finish your book honestly it's touched me so many different places um yeah amazing amazing and um and so, Kira, um, congratulations on your, you've launched another, another pre, pre-interiors, you launched pre-interiors, and you, yes. and you made Forbes, girl, you made I Forbes, I don't know how that happened, you're mother of a 20 month, month old kid, so you're rocking two businesses now, and doing really, really well, how has that been for you, like, congratulations, I mean, the whole thing's been mental, because Nola, although she's amazing, was an accident, so me okay. and Jade, um, Winnie, yeah. set up business together, Mm. And within about two months of us starting the process of setting up Poodle and Blonde, I found out I was pregnant. Wow. Um, and it, it just, like, 
it made me want to make sure I got it right. So rather than doing it just as a passion project, it became like potentially something that would set my daughter's future up. So the it legacy, gave me an extra yeah. drive that I needed. Mm -hmm. um, and then everything with the launch was kind of getting delayed and going slow. Nothing was really going to plan. So we ended up launching a week before I gave birth, um, which wow. was insane. And like the things that I was doing during a launch was just mental. Like at nine months pregnant, I was going to Margate on the train with rolls of fabric, <laughs> like, visiting factories and doing all these mental stuff. And when I look back, I'm like, mm -hmm. I, would, I don't know what I was thinking and why no one told me to stop. Right. I relaxed a bit. Yeah. Um, wow. So yeah, it has been crazy. And I think it's just like balancing everything. So on reflection, I probably should 100% slow down towards the end of my pregnancy um because mm. i had extreme anxiety because just like fear of something going wrong and it's something that i yeah. really when i see other people that are pregnant they seem like they're really enjoying it and i dread i hated the whole pregnancy just because i knew in the back of my mind something could go wrong and i think that comes mm. from so i was fostered as a child so at age two i went into foster care so i lost like my mother and father and then I was adopted when I was seven. So then I lost that family. And so like, I think the fear of losing someone is, is so strong that like, even now, although she's like happy and healthy, I'm always so scared that something's gonna happen. Um, so it's just like really stepping back when I need to and, like putting in that extra time to really bond with her and create memories. Um, so yeah, with work, I've just set it up so that it's like a safe environment for me to be like, I'm not doing any work this week. I'm not sending any more emails. I'm not going to that meeting. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I just always like communicating how I feel, um, which right. I think is important. Like Jenny was talking about Instagram and how it's changed motherhood. I delete, I was gonna ask that, yeah. mm. I delete Instagram once a week because it's just <laughs> the image of a perfect mum that's hot and like got all her shit together and it's like, Dills here, doing this there, flying here, beautiful children. I'm just like, it's too much. I don't want that pressure. Like, I have to get off of it and just focus on Nola. And then I come back and maybe like checking because I need to be on Instagram yeah. for work. Um, yeah. But yeah. yeah, I've definitely been influenced by the influencers, <laughs> but yeah, not necessarily totally. in a positive way. It's not negative. It's just, it's just remembering like to be you and true to yourself and not yeah. like comparing yourself to other mums yeah like, people think that I've got my shit together and when I hear it, I'm like oh, you have no idea <laughs> <laughs> I know right yeah right. and that's what I was going to say is that I think with with all of us in our line of work um and we have to be on Instagram and like social for our work Mm -hmm. You kind of then realize the bullshit that you know is floating around more than other people that don't have to do it for a living and maybe don't realize that and like are really like buying into the like you know I could I could be this woman I could be this woman that does it all that has their own business that's kids looks perfect and I just want to you know say no it's all but it's not real. That's not real. Even when you don't have kids and you see the models and, you know, um, and we, we know that they have to take like a hundred photos to get that light right or whatever, you know, that, that's, that is just not real. Like, you know, and I just wish more mums knew that, like, you know? Yeah. I, I feel like conversations well, yeah. like the, this is really important yeah. um, because even if someone like slides into your DMs and answers you questions, they're never going to really be able to get the information out of you that they need to just remind them that actually you can step back. You don't have to do it all. You don't have yeah. to be single woman, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I um, also think is the way, sorry, that the way Instagram no, actually like built is so scary. Like, you know, you know, like back when it kind of started, it was like you post a picture. It wasn't the stories. You didn't have the whole like, you know, if you send someone a message now and you've read it, you're like, oh shit, I've got a reply now. But then the kids talk about Peppa Pig. And, uh, you know, you're going to give someone anxiety because they know, they're going to think, oh, why have you not replied? But it's not... So, so. Because mm. you, you do actually go, oh, fuck, I shouldn't have read that. I shouldn't have looked at that. It, it just opens. And it's kind of like, 
like, you know, for yeah. people to, that have got work on Instagram, you've got like it's you've got to have follow. It's like the main sort of medium now, isn't it? That people check the stats, all that bullshit. But and it's like you've got to reply within half an hour to a comment to go up the algorithm. And I just think it is so scary the fact that it is so powerful and like to work with people and to be seen. And it's going to be like this whole. These all these people that have got these amazing talents that are so busy doing the talents that they haven't got time to on Instagram. What are they just going to be forgotten from life? Yeah. And I find that quite really upsetting. Yeah, yeah totally, totally. Can I, and can I jump it, in on the opposite of that because we've just sorry we yeah. just had a message from Nat who said Instagram can be an amazing way to connect through showing vulnerabilities and struggles of motherhood and the realities, which yeah. is true as well. On the flip of that is that that sort yeah. of gentle if. If, if you need to reach out and know that you're not alone, it is, it can also be beautiful at the same time. That's, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, that's so true. So true, Nat. So true. But yeah. I, I think that's fine for um, accounts that set themselves up and like kind of allow themselves to welcome that, those people that are seeking that advice and that real story. But someone like me, like me, for example, I'm not an influencer or anything. My account is literally just for me. Um, but obviously I have people reach out to me sometimes and like Jenny says if I can't reply straight away or something like that it's creating an image of myself and it, there's like this whole pressure with pressure. it so mm. the majority of Instagram users who are mothers are probably just doing it just to share pictures they like and not to influence um, and if you happen to have a following and it grows and you suddenly have this pressure to be some sort of a ro role model or someone to lean on and yeah I, I'm kind of struggling how to like set boundaries and use Instagram for what I want to use it for rather than the expectation yeah. that people have watching you. The pressure, yeah, exactly. And I, I wanted to ask you all as well, um, just, uh, just adding to the social media thing is that how has everyone been doing in lockdown? You know, mentally, emotionally, like, you know, with the kids, how are you all doing? How are you all doing? Jenny, do you wanna, do you wanna answer first? You know what? I'm actually like, I, one minute I love it and it's brilliant, but then like what before doing this today, I realised kind of like how I'm not used to like engaging with people that are not like within my really small circle. Mm -hmm. And I think the lit, I think it's especially now like with social media and everything like we're talking about, all the little things that wouldn't necessarily bother you because you're like so confined and you you're not traveling to london i'm not traveling to london i'm not seeing different you know so many people the little things are like bothering me more than they would normally yeah you know I mean? they're taking yeah. up more headspace than they should be taking up yeah yeah totally i totally i totally agree with that i totally like to feel that vibe and i know that i've had to like have a talk to myself a few times and been like that was overly reactional um okay. your PMT, need... you know what i mean like you've got your due for your period or you're on your period and little things happen and then you just like i flipped out so badly at my boyfriend the other day and um and then you look back and you're like oh, why did i do that but you, you know the circumstances are not normal and i've got three kids and it's just yeah. all mental it is a bit mental. I love, I love my son. I love him to death, but he's like the ever ready bunny. People are always like, he's so happy and energetic. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm 46. I'm nearly 50 years old, man. I'm like, slow the fuck down. I can't keep up with you. Like, where's the batteries? Take them the fuck out. You know, uh, love him to death. Love him to death. But from March until September, having this ever ready bunny, like he's like a puppy that you, you know, kind of like have to take him out every day because if you don't, you know, you're not getting any work done, you know? And I love that time with him. I do, I, I, I love that I've been able to spend so much time. It's the reason I became self-employed. But some days I'm kind of like, Whoa! you know, it's a bit much. Is anyone else finding that? Well, I feel like lockdown forced me to completely slow down. Like all, uh, there was a point when both of our factories were shut. So we actually couldn't produce all the oh, things. Wow, yeah. And it was like such a nice thing because it just meant that I had all this time to just focus on being a mum, focus on my home, focus on my relationship. So much so that like on this side, now that we're out of lockdown, I still want to maintain that like slower pace of life. I actually realised looking back, it's mental trying to do it all and being that busy. Um, I don't know yeah. if I actually can maintain like a slower pace, but I will try. Exactly, you got to. And Laura, how has it affected you? Uh, hi, um, 
I actually think it's been a, a like you were saying, like a, a blessing in disguise, really. I feel, I feel that I that rat race, that thing I used to try and run before, you know, going to meetings and meeting friends for drinks, carrying the pipe. Oh, great, I'm out till 2 a.m. again, mm. doing it all again sort of thing and not getting much writing done. I mean, I'm still not getting much writing done, but mm. it's forced me. I feel my wellest when I'm my slowest and I have when it all right. ties back to sleep, for example, for me, I kind of go... I, I'm more likely to sleep if I go, I've got nothing to be alert for tomorrow, except just exist and let my animal of a body do what it needs to do um, oh and not force myself. But uh, from Monday next week, it's Hugo's first time he's going back to work ever because I was unwell and then he took some time away. He's self-employed. So he's back yeah. in the studio from Monday. Mm. This is the studio I'm in now where he's been working from home. I don't know mm. how to do any of this stuff behind me. And then... Um, so actually this is going to be my first time kind of doing that single mum thing and it's going to be odd because going to play group and those things that I was doing before lockdown, hearing mums, oh, I'm so tired or I'm doing this on my own, I could never relate to that and that always made me feel weirder in the other way. Like, oh, why mm. am I so, why do I have to be helped so much? Like I got that kind of other flat, flat, um, yeah. flat of yeah. it. So mm. now I'm like, but I'm really excited. Like, and cause I haven't got the pressure on me anymore. I feel well, I'm like actually looking forward to kind of doing things our way. He's just watched the whole of I May Destroy You and he had no choice about that. So, <laughs> and he's two. So <laughs> he were doing things my way at home. So no, I feel good. Excellent. I feel really good. Good, good. Well, lady, it's been amazing chatting. So I, like I said, I could talk all night, all day, you know, on this. And I'd still be thinking of things like, you know, God, I should have said this, I could have said this. But um, we've actually got to um, hand over to the lovely cat now, who's going to take us through some Pilates. Hi, cat. Hi. That's um, really amazing hearing what everyone's saying, because I don't actually have children. I mm -hmm. just have a bit of an obsession with women's health. Um, mm -hmm. partly from my own perspective but actually just in educating people so when I first trained in Pilates in our course I hated the pre and postnatal weekend I thought oh my god I'm never going to teach anyone who's pregnant <laughs> or has a baby how am I going to do just come in and lay on the floor and breathe that's what we're going to do but like you're saying like whilst women are strong and like we are strong people and we're strong willed and it's the will to carry on what you're doing like you were saying Kira like just wanting to keep going but actually we have to slow down so that's wow. almost so great about this time to just yeah. slow down so um in uh quite a few different methods of training that I've done not just Pilates somatics um Feldenkrais and the Franklin method um I work with Pilates, which is kind of my one true love, but all these other methods that fit around it. So I want to do something that is actually more about slowing down and about being aware of your body and your pelvis and just how that can change what your pelvic floor is doing. So we, I'm sure we've all heard of Kegels, we've all heard mm -hmm. of clenching and lifting and squeezing and working and all those other words that make me go, uh, no, I just want you to breathe. <laughs> and even just breathing helps move and massage the pelvic floor and find tone in the pelvic floor rather than what you could sort of see in other functional muscles like bulk in them or, or tension in them too. Um, so I can see all these lovely faces on the screen. And if you do have two hands free, because I know there's someone that doesn't, <laughs> I want you to hold your hands up in a diamond shape and this is how I picture the pelvis so if you look at your thumbs where they meet this is your tailbone and if you look at your um, fingertips where they meet that's your pubic bone and then this it doesn't actually have a name but this point that's between your thumb and your forefinger they're your sit bones. And I want you to think about where you're sitting right now. And I mean, I'm sitting on one hip at the moment, but where you're sitting right now, are you balanced in those points? Or are you tipping forwards? Are you perhaps tipping back? Are you sitting, I'm completely sitting on one side. I've been like this the whole time. Um, I'm just gonna pin myself, just so I can see myself a bit bigger, so I can make sure that you can see me here. So. Again, wherever you are, I want you to now place that diamond on the front of your pelvis. 
So it's really important for us to sort of touch our own body to get used to sort of feeling what's going on and where the bones are placed. And I've been doing this lots now. I've been teaching on Zoom for weeks and weeks and weeks <laughs> and not been in real life. And then just sort of maybe even glancing down. I know, I mean, I'm leaning up if you're sitting, even just noticing here now, are your fingertips leaning back and your thumbs tipping forward? So this is where we all go in pregnancy. The body has to do this, but maybe we're naturally there too. So just noticing where the bones, your hip bones and then the pubic bone have gone. So maybe the fingertips are tipping back and the thumbs tipping forwards, yeah? So we're not quite in neutral. So you can leave it for a moment, but if I show you, once we're in standing, here's my beautiful pelvis that I've shown the girls before, which I love. <laughs> um, and it's kind of like a bowl shape. So we picture, once we see the pelvis, that it is like this bowl, but actually it tips forwards. So it's more like a pelvic, wall at the back of the body than a floor underneath. Yeah, I hope you can just about see that. And then the moment we're slumping or maybe sticking the tailbone out or you've got a child down here hanging off one leg and a child on a hip and then maybe another one that you're feeding over here, we all end up hanging out here which was me at school, shortening myself to talk to everyone. Um, it totally throws the tone of that pelvic floor off alignment. So again, if you want to use your hands, you're welcome to, but if you picture within that space where the muscles sit, there's got to be tone within them for the pelvic floor to function properly. So a big thing for me was actually learning that pre, you know, ed, we need to educate young girls, just like with menstrual health, with this like pelvic health, the pelvic bowl, and how, yes, we can be scared of pregnancy, we can be scared of birth, but actually, and I know there's hypnobirthing courses out there, but just having this education of how this part of your body functions, or how it should function, or maybe what isn't right with it, and you know how we can change that and, um, and find better pelvic health, um, how that will help when it perhaps does come to childbirth um, and afterwards and onwards forevermore. So I want you to lay on the floor if you've got a little bit of space. I know that might mean shuffling your screens around a little bit, but hopefully my description, you know, if you can't, hopefully my description will help you um, get into this. But once we're laying on the floor, you want to just notice what your pelvis is doing here. So maybe placing the, the hands the heels of your hands onto your hip bones and the fingers, again, in that diamond shape towards the pubic bone. And I mean, you can lift the head to see what's happening. Maybe those fingertips are now higher than your thumbs or the thumbs higher than your fingertips, but just trying to find this parallel point. And then as you breathe in, I want you to picture that the sit bones are widening and we start to tip the pelvis forwards. And then as you exhale, you rock the pelvis back. So you can do this still if you're sitting actually on a chair. As you breathe in, the sit bones widen as you tip the pelvis forwards and you get that arch in your lower back. And then as you exhale, you rock back and you start to flatten towards the floor. So we're not squeezing the muscles, you're certainly not squeezing your glutes. You're just trying to find this rock through the pelvis. So even if you're sat up, no matter where you are, even if you're on your chair, you can do that here and you want to rock back and then tip forwards. You can maybe see it better now that I'm kneeling, rocking back and tipping forwards. Exactly. So nothing is squeezing. We're letting the breath move the bones of the body. Uh -huh. And then try and picture as you're, well, you can just lay or sit wherever you are. You picture that diamond shape again with the hands. You want to try and draw the tailbone towards the pubic bone and then let them slide apart. So what happens as you're doing that, oh, here we go, it's better with my top. What happens as you're doing that is we get this kind of shape through the pelvic floor. You might feel a bit of tone and lift through the pelvic floor as you're doing that. And then inhale and it slides apart. So you feel as if your tailbone slides towards the pubic bone and then slides away. We can also feel those points between the thumb and the finger drawing towards each other and then sliding away from each other. 
So as you exhale, no matter where you are, whether you're sitting or laying, try and feel that the sit bones slide towards each other. And then as you inhale, they slide apart. As you exhale, they slide together. And your inhale, slide them apart. And then we can start to add on more movement to this. So more just so you've kind of got it, there's a tool that you can use if you're not doing it right now. Once you're laying on the floor, we let the pelvis rock back into your posterior tilt and we start to peel up towards the shoulder blades. So we're coming into a shoulder bridge, but then we want to try and let go of your glutes. So we're really scooping through the belly and you've got that, maybe you can lay that diamond shape with your hands on the belly. And then as you exhale, we roll back down through the spine. So we get this nice elongation through the spine. We breathe in and let the sit bones widen. And then as you exhale, feel the sit bones draw together as you peel up. Again, you're not gripping the glutes, so you're trying to let go of your bottom. And then as you exhale, we're rolling back down again. So it's just a nice way to get a bit of a massage through the lower back too. So if you picture that diamond again, just coming back to this, say we had a cross through the diamond. I was going to use a slide, but it's quite nice to do it with your hands and really picture this. You can draw the pubic bone towards the tailbone, the tailbone towards the pubic bone, and then release away. You can draw the sit bones together, but you can also draw all four towards each other. Or as you're walking, maybe just noticing that one sit bone draws in and then the other. So if you are on the floor, and I'm just changing my view slightly here. So if you are on the floor, we can peel up into that shoulder bridge. And then as I exhale here, I'm pressing one foot so heavy that I can lift the other. And I've got pelvic stability, partly from the big global muscles, but also from the pelvic floor lifting. I can see some of you doing that, it's really nice. And then floating up on the other side. Uh -huh. And then roll yourself back down. So that's quite a good exercise to you. I mean, I always say when I teach my postnatal classes and there's babies around the room, they're kind of climbing over you, or you can have them laying on you, you can have them sitting on your pelvis. It's just, it's almost like added load, which is okay, because we're carrying them around all the time anyway. And then those of you that have been doing it, if we come back up to standing and try and notice what your pelvis does in standing. So why don't we all stand up for just a moment? Try and feel what you <laughs> see everyone. So try and feel what your pelvis is doing here. So if we tend, like I said, in pregnancy, we tend to go into what we do, go into this tipping forwards, this anterior tilt of the pelvis, which pelvis sticks out. So go again with that diamond on the front of your pelvis. So this is also like the shape of your um, womb and your uterus. As you're stood here, maybe just notice, use your hands to like feel what's going on. So maybe feeling your lower back, you might feel like it really hurts. This is where I want to be naturally. And then just pay attention to the feet on the floor. So we've got a diaphragm in your feet too. You're gonna breathe in. And then as you exhale, start to feel your tailbone drop down towards the ground and the pubic bone lifts up. So it's like the pubic bone is lifting up towards your breastbone. Yeah, and then let yourself go back so you can feel it. So we're going to this arching. And then as you exhale, send the tailbone down towards the ground and feel the breastbone lift. So you might feel this sense of lift through your abdominals. You might feel a sense of lift of your thigh bones coming up into your hip sockets. It's almost like the legs are lifting up into your hip sockets. But you can still breathe. So just let the arms go. We want to keep that sense of a weight hanging off of your tailbone. And then breathe wide into your rib cage. So picture the ribs opening out towards your arms. And as you exhale, just let the ribs shrink back down. Again, you can breathe in, but you can keep that placement of the bones. And then exhale, release it. And then just as we're here, why don't we inhale to draw the shoulders up towards your ears and then roll them down your back. And sometimes it's just kind of noticing, have I even done that movement today? Have I moved in this way? 
If we come down on the floor, I mean, those of you that weren't here before, you, you don't have to, you can just go back to sit in. But once you're on the floor on your hands and knees, you know, maybe you're playing on the floor with the kids. And so you watch a baby as they start to crawl and, and how they start to move around the room. So crawling is actually a really good pelvic floor exercise. So even just finding that coordination sometimes might be the hardest part, especially if you're tired, especially if your brain's in other places. But it's a good one to really get you into your body. So crawling forwards, opposite hand and knee, and we get this slight rotation in the pelvis, and then you're going to crawl backwards. So that's also part of like that cognitive training, especially for babies. Crawling forwards, so we get opposite sides of the pelvic floor working, and then crawling backwards. And this is always one that you can try later on. The trickier one is bringing one knee forwards and then crossing it over the other. So it's quite a good game to play with older kids. And then obviously stepping the hands forwards and taking the other knee all the way around. So this is more like a functional movement, but it's really stretching and toning through the pelvic floor as you go. Um, some of you might have experienced from pregnancy and birth pain in the coccyx. This is a really good one to get the coccyx releasing. So the coccyx needs to move, but sometimes where, um, you know, maybe we all think we know different things, but we tend to think that the pelvic floor becomes... I was laughing before when we said about um, mother loose. We think things become a bit loose and floppy. It's not necessarily the case. We can become overtoned through the pelvic floor. So it's called hypotonic. And what we actually need is to be able to release. So wherever you are, again, here, I know I'm kind of jumping around a bit. I could go on forever with this kind of stuff. But just go back to that idea of the diamond. Just noticing, I'm sitting on my knees and I'm actually tipping forwards. So we're going to try and find your sit bones. So you really are sat on your sit bones, whether you're kneeling or whether you're on the floor or a chair, wherever you are, really find your sit bones. You're not tipping forward. You're not slumping back on the sit bones. So this diamond has this real kind of tone and opening and not tension, but just spread through it. Close your eyes for a moment and be comfortable wherever you are, but close your eyes and as you breathe in, picture your breath going all the way down through your body to that bowl. And then as you exhale, it travels from the bowl back up and out of your mouth. Again, let the shoulders relax, breathe in, feel the breath travel all the way down to that, that bowl of the pelvis. It's like the bowl catches it. And then as you exhale, it travels all the way back up. Yeah, take a couple more breaths like that. And picture the journey of the breath. The journey, uh, sorry, the breath will find the path of least resistance. So if there is any resistance, whether it be from holding a baby on one side, one hip, it's going to avoid that. So you want to breathe into any points that feel like it is resisting. In particularly, the sit bones. So try and picture the sit bones breathing wide and it's almost a teacher of mine used to say it's like you're breathing in through your nether regions and then as you exhale it travels back out of the body i'm going to leave it there because i really could carry on forever but i hope that gives you just a little flavor so i'll pass back to clarissa <laughs> I thank, <could> you. <laughs> thank you kat that was beautiful that was lovely i'd never oh. I've never, I've never even like learned about that before. That's amazing. I, I definitely oh. learned something today. Yeah. Uh, to hit you up, sister, to find out a bit more about that. Yeah. Um, okay, guys. So um, I don't know if we've got any time to take any quick quest, any quick and urgent questions. Uh, have we got time, Amy, to take some any quick and urgent questions? I think we've got a few minutes. If yeah. anyone's got and any also, questions. If you it would be awesome to hear about what you do, Clarissa, as well, because we haven't had a chance to ask questions back at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, so me, personally, I wrote um, a book recently called Change Your Life on Your Sofa, um, and I think that was, you know, 
in in the vein of like women and motherhood that came directly from that because at that point my life changed so drastically that it was a few years later but it was kind of like when you're th you're thrown into it and it's sink or swim you know and I became a new mum and I and I became single and it all happened at once and I moved from London to to Margate alone with my baby no family no friends or anyone I didn't know anyone so a lot of like really like um transformational shit happened at that point and um and so through researching about books for a client and a friend, I realized that there was this book inside me. So I dabbled with um, like sort of doing a bit of writing, writing out. And um, like Laura said, it just fell out of me. Like it just fell out of me about how I had done it by literally being on my sofa as a new mum to, um, to a new baby who needed me that it was possible to transform and i thought this has got to be something interactive that people can scribble in and write in and like be really raw about things and so that it's something that you can actually keep like a little bible of something that you went through that transformed you so i think that's really apart from being a mother that's what i'm most proud of as a coach is that i i wrote this book change your life from your sofa in 28 days because that kind of stuff is possible where we feel that there's no way that we can do it as a mom we don't have enough time and and it's it's very very possible and so that's what I'm most proud of uh, but in general I'm a coach I teach um, magnetism how to magnetize the life that you want to you um, as a single mom I think I you know I started working for myself because I realized I didn't want to send my son to nursery for 10 hours a day and it literally I was scared shitless that I was doing the wrong thing and being really irresponsible by setting up in business at all you know at a time when I needed to be a mum and be responsible and have those funds and have and provide because I was a single mum but I went with it anyway and and yeah it's gone into learning how to um, use what I had learned as a new mum a single mum and shape other people's lives with it so so yeah, so that's, and from that, now I've just newly qualified as a hypnotherapist. And so really it's all for me about teaching people how to transform and how to magnetize to them the life you want, no matter what your age, no matter who you are, no matter what, where, where you are in life. If you have the desire and you can commit, it, anything is possible. Um, and I find that a lot of my clients are mothers who think, this can't be it for me. This cannot be it. I've lost my identity and I need it back. And so I'm really passionate about that. And so, yeah, that's, that's, that's really me. Thank you, Clarissa. You're super inspiring and you're an amazing host. So thank you Thanks, for doing Amy. this. Thank you. I'm thank just really you. proud. And, and like the fact that this festival is called Power of Women is just, it's just so true. We are so bloody powerful. And I think we should allow ourselves a pat on the back for that every day because we just yeah. don't, and we just soldier on we put ourselves at the bottom of the pile and if we're not good to ourselves like we can't be good for other people and i know we all know that but like when you're living it and it's so amazing to do this stuff with you cat because i never allow myself a chance to like rock my pelvis about and like crawling on the floor i was like actually i couldn't even work out my left and my right so i was like i need to do this stuff so thank yeah. you for giving us the reason to to do it tonight and Pleasure. I, I mean, there's just a comment from um, someone, Francesca. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so that's something that is really important. It's something that we're not necessarily taught about diastasis recti, which is separation of the abdominal wall, which has to happen to grow a child, as it were, to put it simply. But um, all those exercises that we've just done are diastasis recti. Um, sorry, compatible, as you said. Like they're they're safe to do. Um, but what that is a lot about is breathing and you know you can go for years with diastasis recti and it can affect you later on in life as we sort of come into the menopause um, as um, hormone levels change but it is about breathing. Does the recti bit stand for bum bum? Say that again? For bum bum? Does recti mean bum bum in like, is it Latin? <laughs> <laughs> it means it means that the um, abdominus rectus has separated. Okay. So.
is rectum like bum bum yeah okay <laughs> there's some really nice comments on here as well thanks everyone saying yeah, here's exactly. some more honesty on motherhood the clash of the good the bad and the ugly and thanks to Kat. Thanks. Brilliant. Zoom. Keep sharing. Keep being open and honest. We have to have these conversations. That's why I feel so strongly about Laura's book and that you should all read it because this is a really new thing. Like my grandmother had postpartum psychosis and everyone just told her she was crazy and she was in the home for like far too long than she should have been. And then she came out and people still had like the, the analogy that you said about the lady in the night who covered in blood, like people thought that she was this crazy lady and she's an absolute icon in my eyes. So I think it, if we normalize these conversations, then it's just such a beautiful thing because we can, we can change the world. Cause if women are good to each other, then the whole world is better. And I think that's what all these talks this week, I really want to come to that conclusion, that's which we cool. already bloody know that the women are super powerful and that, by, by women coming together, we can change the world in these situations. So I just got shivers talking, which is weird because I'm <laughs> talking myself, but I feel, I feel really, really strongly about these topics. And I'm so proud and honored that you all came today and made this thing happen that we could connect even though we're like in our own living rooms. It's, it's really, really special. Um, shall we wrap up? It feels weird to just say bye because I'm having such a nice time, but I know we're right. I know, I know. I've had a great time too. Thank you, Amy. Thank I'm you, so Amy, to everyone. Go by. <laughs> it feels a bit weird. <laughs> no.